All right. Well, good evening, everybody. My name is Taylor Richmond. I'm a past president and a member of the exec board for West Virginia Acro. And on behalf of our association and StriveScan, our partner company, we're so pleased to have you uh, joining us this evening uh, for a, a very insightful presentation from uh, West Liberty. Uh, we've got a great panel here to uh, answer all your questions and, and, and bring a lot of information to you. Before we begin and I hand that off, I do have a quick couple of housekeeping items to go over. Um, first, your mic and camera are muted and turned off. Uh, it looks like my lights just did. Um, so the presenter or presenters won't be able to see or hear you. Uh, however, they, you do have the opportunity to interact with them via the Q&A function um, in this uh, session. So if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to utilize that and submit your questions there. Uh, they can either answer that audibly through the presentation or they may message you directly uh, with, with the answer to that. Um, also, this is one of many sessions that we have hosted and, and will host throughout the rest of this week. Um, so please uh, check any uh, additional sessions out that you have time to attend. Um, you can find a full list of our uh, presentations that have happened and are happening at westvirginiaacro.org. Again, that is W-V-A-C-R-A-O.org. Um, and also this presentation is recorded. So if you have any follow-up uh, questions that you want to rewatch and gather, or you uh, want to share this with somebody, please feel free to direct them to our site where they can find this and all other pre-recorded sessions. Again, that's wvacrao.org. All right, I'll be back in about 45 minutes when the presentation is, is over. So with that, I will turn it over to our lovely presenters, uh, Ms. Rhonda, to begin her presentation. Have a great time. Thank you, Taylor. I'm going to go ahead and get ready and um, share my screen here and get started. Okay, sorry for, thanks for bearing with me here. Okay, thank you for joining us this evening for this webinar. My name is Rhonda McCullough and I am an admissions counselor at West Liberty University. Also joining me this evening are two of our outstanding student ambassadors and I'm gonna have them introduce themselves. And uh, Lauren, if you would like to start by introducing yourself and telling us where you're from and what your major is and why you chose West Liberty. I'm Lauren Fridley. I am a senior broadcasting major with a minor in journalism, and I am from Shepherdstown, West Virginia, which is about four hours away from West Liberty in the Eastern Panhandle. Um, I chose West Liberty because as soon as I stepped on the campus, I just felt this very home-like atmosphere, and that was something that was really important for me if I was going to choose a college that was a little farther away and I haven't regretted my decision since. It's felt like home since the day I stepped on campus. Okay, Bree, if, if you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself and do the same, that would be great. Hi, I'm Brianna Sayer. Uh, I'm a senior human biology major with a minor in psychology. And I chose West Lib because my mom actually went to school here. Um, I'm from Wheeling, so it's only like 20 minutes away from my house. And I just heard amazing things about their science program. And I genuinely just like the atmosphere, like Lauren said, like it just felt like a home. Everybody knew everybody and everybody I met was so nice. And the campus is just beautiful. So I fell in love with it. Okay, thank you so much, Lauren and Bree. And we're gonna hear more from them at the end of the presentation. So just to kind of give you just a little overview of how this is going to go, I'm just going to do um, a campus overview, a, an overview of West Liberty University, and then we'll do a, a general uh, Q&A and also Q&A with the student ambassadors. A lot of times students have questions, but they would kind of like to get the another current student's perspective on things. So I really thank Lauren and Bree for being here with me this evening. Um, beginning with a brief overview of the university, West Liberty was established in 1837, and we're, we are the oldest public institution of higher education in the state of West Virginia. So we've been around even before West Virginia was a state. 
Our overall enrollment is around 2,500 students with a faculty to student ratio of 15 to one. So what that means when you hear that statistic is for every 15 students we have, one full-time faculty member. So, and that's really what contributes to us having a small average classroom size of around 25 students. And it has been proven that students learn faster and perform better in smaller classroom settings. So that those statistics are intentional. West Liberty makes an intentional, um, goes in that intentional direction to have the smaller classroom sizes. This is an aerial view of our campus. As in, in, as you can see, it's a beautiful campus. We were actually voted the safest college campus in the state of West Virginia among four-year public universities by niche.com. Um, as you can see from this map, I have listed a few travel distances between West Liberty and various areas within the state of West Virginia. Um, we are less than 15 minutes to Wheeling. We're just an hour from Morgantown, about two hours from Parkersburg, and just under four hours from Martinsburg in the Eastern Panhandle. We're also within an hour of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And um, the makeup of our student body, in addition to having students from 48 of West Virginia's 55 counties, we also have students from 30 different states and 30 different countries. So we have a pretty diverse uh, student body. West Liberty offers over 50 student clubs and organizations for students to become involved in. These clubs and organizations include honor societies, Greek life, student government, intramural sports, and, and many, many more. We are also very fortunate to be located within minutes of both Ogilvy Park and the Highlands. And if you're not familiar with Ogilvy Park, um, it is literally just a few minutes down the road from us, so close that we kind of consider it an extension of our campus. And it offers everything from swimming to hiking, golf, tennis, horseback riding. There, there's an aerial challenge, um, shopping, dining, and also the Ogilvy Good Zoo. And the Ogilvy Good Zoo is um, a place that West Liberty actually has a partnership with due to our zoo science program. Um, and as I mentioned, we're also just minutes from the Highlands, which is a shopping and dining destination. And if you can't find what you're looking for at the Highlands, we are also, um, as I mentioned, very close to Wheeling and our downtown Wheeling area also has shopping and dining. And we're also very close to the Ohio Valley Mall in St. Clairsville. So even though we're in this rural setting, we are so close to so many different different things for our student population to be able to take advantage of. West Liberty has 18 NCAA Division II sports, and we are a member of the Mountain East Conference. We, um, I'll have to tell you that our sports events and our, our sporting events, I should say, um, are very well attended, not just by our student body, but also by this whole community. And there's a lot of excitement on campus uh, during these sporting events, especially our men's basketball team. Um, They've been nationally ranked for several, a few years now, and just the excitement on campus and within the whole community during basketball season is, it's really indescribable. It's something you almost have to um, attend and be a part of to, to give it justice. But all of our sports are like that. They're very well attended and very well supported. So, so we're really pleased and excited about that. West Liberty has seven residence halls and five, actually soon to be six, apartment complexes. We have designated single rooms available to students upon request. And this fall, that became a really big deal, especially with the pandemic. Many students who were living on campus requested single room housing, and we accommodated those students. Now, as a result, we actually ran out of housing, or actually, I should say, not ran 
ran out, but there was a waiting list. And we had to temporarily house some students at Ogilvy until openings occurred. Um, but the point of all that was we accommodated everybody who needed those accommodations. And, and we have, um, with our apartment complexes, there's a lot of modern housing options for students to choose from. And as well as our traditional residence halls who have undergone many renovations over the past few years. 50% of our students live on campus and about 80% of our freshmen live on campus. Our application for admission for the fall 2021 is currently open and actually opened this summer in June. And it's available on our website. As you can see from my slide, there is no application fee. There's never an application fee. And um, we really encourage students to apply early. First of all, because there is no application fee, as I mentioned, and there is no obligation. So there's only benefits to applying early. There's no downside to it. So applying early will um, get you connected to the university. It will allow us to keep you infor informed and updated on next steps and everything that you need to know as you're moving through the college admission process. So we really encourage students to go online and apply. You could see the link there is westliberty.edu backslash apply. Our admission requirements are uh, include a minimum 2.0 grade point average. And we typically also require minimum ACT or SAT scores. Uh, however, for next year's incoming class, West Liberty has actually gone test optional. And what test optional means is that your ACT and SAT scores do not play a part in determining admission to the university. Now, even though we are test optional, we encourage students to take the ACT or SAT anyway. Actually, that should relieve a little bit of test anxiety, the fact that it's not going to be determined. Your admission will not be determined based on the outcome of your scores. But the reason that we encourage students to still take those tests is because it is used to determine scholarship eligibility and also placement into English and math classes when uh, registration time rolls around. So um, still take those tests if you can. Um, another requirement that we have along with the minimum ACT, I'm sorry, the minimum 2.0 grade point average are curricular requirements. They're listed here on my screen. You can see what they include, the um, units of English, math, lab science, social science, foreign language, and fine arts. Uh, typically that we don't run into very many issues with students not having those requirements, but if you are someone who may be concerned about coming up short one or two curricular requirements, you can always reach out to me and we can discuss the possibility of admitting you as an exception to our regular admissions policy. Common questions that we get uh, about um, previous college credit in the way of advanced placement credit, for instance, is um, can students receive college credit for taking advanced placement classes? And I always tell them, yes, you can, as long as you follow through and take that advanced placement exam and score a three or higher. And then all we would need is a copy of your score report and sent to us and based on your score, as long as it's a three or higher, we will award you the proper college credit. Another common question is, will college classes that I take while I'm in high school um, be accepted by West Liberty University? And again, the answer is yes, we do accept those credits. And all you need to do in that case is have an official transcript sent to us from whatever college or university those credits were earned through. So even if those credits appear on your high school transcript, we still have to have a, an official transcript directly from the institution where those credits were earned through. So keep that in mind. 
we're really fortunate to have many dining options for our students. Our food service company is Sodexo and they do a phenomenal job. Um, in addition to our cafeteria or marketplace, we have Wow Cafe and that is an American grill and wingery and it has a little bit of something for everyone. Um, we also have Sandela's Flatbread Cafe, which is considered a healthy alternative to uh, fast food and sub shops. Their menu has a variety of, of wraps and paninis and quesadillas and um, burritos and, and salads. And we also have Jasmine's Cafe and Bakery, and it's similar to a Starbucks. They are known for their fresh brewed signature coffee and tea beverages, along with uh, freshly baked items. And we also have the ever popular Subway restaurant on our campus. And we have Domino's Pizza, which is located right next to one of our apartment complexes. And if you simply need some grocery items or snack items or some prepackaged meals, we have Bear Necessities Convenience Store located in our college union. So we have a lot of different options. Of course, looking at the cost of your education can also be a deciding factor, um, an important factor when determining where you're going to attend college. West Liberty has been named as one of the top 100 most affordable universities in the United States by college consensus. In addition, 90% of our students receive financial aid and we give out over $6 million annually in scholarships. So we have a lot of ways to support and help our students in paying for college. Our scholarship opportunities come from athletics, which are determined by the head coaches of each, of each sport. Um, artistic, which are awarded by our faculty based on auditions or portfolio reviews, and academic, which is determined by a combination of grade point average and SAT or ACT scores. This chart is um, of our academic scholarships, and it shows the dollar amount students are awarded based on their grade point average and their corresponding ACT or SAT score. The nice thing about our academic scholarships are that you do not have to complete a separate application. In other words, you don't have to apply for these academic scholarships. Once you apply for admission to the university and you have your transcript sent to us and your test scores where we can verify your grade point average and overall test score, um, you will automatically be awarded the scholarship that you have qualified for. And um, one thing I'd like to mention, because I do get this comment quite often from students, I have students say, well, I don't want to apply for admission yet because I wasn't happy with my test score and I'm going to retake the test score and I don't want to be uh, judged on scholarship eligibility based on what I send you right now. So what I tell the students and what I'd like to tell you is that we will always honor your highest test score. So don't let the fact that um, you, you don't have your best test score in front of you right at the moment and you're planning on retaking a test, don't let that stop you from applying. Because even if we award you a scholarship and then later on you retake one of the tests and you score higher and you qualify for a higher scholarship, we will honor that. So um, I always like to mention that because I don't want to um, have students not apply because they're waiting on a higher test score. The amounts listed here on these, uh, this tuition and fee chart, these are annual amounts. Keep in mind that students are billed and pay by the semester. So um, as you can see here, our in-state tuition um, is currently at a little over $8,000 and, and that's per year. And our room and board per year is um, 9806. 
We also have uh, two other rates, out of state and metro rate. Our metro rate is for neighboring counties in Ohio, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Virginia. And those uh, counties that are attached to each of those states are all listed on our website. West Liberty has over 70 different majors to choose from. Those majors are broken down into five different colleges and those colleges are listed here. And on the next slides, I'm just gonna briefly mention these colleges and some of the majors. I won't spend a lot of, of time on that. Uh, you'll see a glimpse of that on each of the following slides though. Um, the um, actually before I jump to those, I do want to mention that we also have graduate studies. So once you earn your undergraduate degree, if you want to move on to earn your master's degree, we have several different uh, master's degrees to choose from with our newest being athletic training. So at the undergraduate level, we have our College of Arts and Communications, and this is what houses all of our art, music, and theater programs, as well as public relations, journalism, and creative arts therapy. Under our College of Business, we literally have majors from A to Z. They offer uh, things from accounting to zoo management, and one of our newest majors in business is cybersecurity. Also, I'd like to mention, I always like to point out that our general business degree has the option to be completed 100% online. Our College of Education and Human Performance has elementary education, early intervention, health and PE, just to name a few. And also located in our College of Education and Human Performance is our exercise physiology major. And you can see that there are different concentrations within that major, including the pre-athletic training concentration, because we now have a master's degree, a graduate degree in athletic training. So students who wanna move on to that uh, graduate degree, they uh, can major in our exercise physiology with the pre-athletic training concentration. Our um, College of Education and Human Performance also has a separate uh, category of community education. And these are for students who wanna teach, but maybe they do not necessarily want to teach in the traditional classroom setting. So we have various areas within communi community education that could be a perfect match for those students. Um, the College of Sciences, has been described as a student-focused teaching, learning, and research environment dedicated to excellence in undergraduate and graduate education. Uh, we believe that we offer the strongest undergraduate basic and, basic and health science program in the state of West Virginia. And our acceptance rate of students graduating with their undergraduate and then being admitted into a master's program either at West Liberty or elsewhere is very, very high. We offer five different majors within our Department of Health Sciences, and you can see those listed here. And the facilities for our health science programs are state-of-the-art facilities. And I would really challenge anyone to find better programs than what West Liberty has to offer in our areas of health science. Um, Visiting campus, we now are offering individual tours. We had shut that down for a while due to the pandemic, um, but we have now reopened that uh, as of last month. And we encourage students to schedule an individual tour with us. And um, also you have the option of attending one of our virtual black and gold day events and to schedule either an individual tour, which is now being offered Monday through Friday, Friday at 9 a.m. or 1 p.m. because we're only allowing the individual tours. We're only allowing one student or family per time slot. So we encourage students to get on our website and schedule a, um, a date and time early so that you can get the uh, time slot of your choice. And if you see that it's filled up, keep checking back because occasionally things come up and we do have cancellations. So definitely keep checking back on that. 
And you can also, as I mentioned, attend one of our virtual Black and Gold Day events by going to uh, the same website or web page, which is westliberty.edu backslash visit. This is um, our contact information as far as social media goes. We, we, um, we encourage students to follow us on social media to get up to date information. And it's a lot of fun to see the things that are, uh, it's fun and it's informative to see the things that are posted on our social media. This is my contact information. And it, as I said, I'm one of the admissions counselors. My email address is listed here, along with my, uh, my office phone number, my cell phone number. And you can, if you wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one appointment with me um, Zoom, via Zoom or some other platform, you can, uh, we could do that. There's a link there um, for you can book me and it's me. So we can set up an appointment that way. And I'd really like to open it up to any questions that you might have either for me or our student uh, ambassadors. Some questions that students typically have in these kind of sessions have to do with housing or food options, which I know we briefly touched on, what kind of activities go on on campus, you know, what kind of, um, what are the classes like? Uh, what are the sporting events like? So I know our students are uh, ready, willing, and able to answer some of those questions. And if there's any questions for me personally, I'm open to that as well. So please feel free. I know our facilitator at the top of the hour mentioned um, typing in the Q&A. And so um, if... Uh, Bree and Lauren, if you've been keeping an eye on that by any chance, you could let me know if any questions have come in. Okay. Well, I, I, I don't see any questions just yet in the Q&A, but you've got some great uh, starting points. So I'm going to take the opportunity. Uh, they're learning so much about Westlib. I, I do have some questions for our students. So housing i'm gonna just curious where our uh, student advisors live where they recommend do they have any preferences is there depending on major should you live one place or the other any kind of insight on uh, housing decisions for students that uh, you ladies may have yeah so i'm actually a resident assistant on campus so i'm in charge of housing so i'm a resident assistant in christ hall which is a double dorm your basic standard you get a roommate and you share a bathroom with two other people um i love christ i've lived in christ for four semesters now um the this yeah this is christ anybody hello um now you get two beds you get two desks in the room um the location of christ is fantastic it's right by the building that i have all of my classes in but one thing that um, any housing choice is going to be a good choice because everything, everything like on our campus is within a 10 minute walk of each other. Um, I, I can walk from the opposite ends of campus and it only takes 10 minutes. So you know, you never have to worry about, you know, having to get up and like take the train or take the bus to class. Like you walk, you get up, you walk and you go to class all by yourself. Um, we have about a 10 to 15 minute time gap in between each, um, class, which is the perfect amount of time to get to your next class. Um, but I've also lived in three other residence halls. Um, we have seven. I've lived in three or four of them. I lived in Beta. Beta is our single suite style. So you live in a room all by yourself, but you only share a bathroom with one other person. I've lived in Rogers, which is completely designated singles, um, community style bathrooms. Honestly, very nice building. It's in the same building as our cafeteria. So you never even have to go outside to get into the cafeteria, which is really nice during the winters when you never have to walk over there in the snow. Um, and I've also lived in Boyd Hall, which is essentially the same thing as Rogers, just in a different location. So there's a lot of different options that we provide. All of them are great. If you come and join and tour our campus, you'll be able, excuse me, you'll be able to see the location of them much better. They're all very close to each other. They're very, I mean, Beta is right next to Christ and Christ is right next to Boner and Boner is right next to Curtis. I mean, there's an option for everybody and our apartments are fantastic as well. I have a lot of friends who live in the apartments. They're, they're pretty nice and you can get into them as a freshman. Obviously, you know, senior, seniors and juniors and sophomores have seniority, 
but you're able to apply anywhere as a freshman. So I think that's super cool. Yeah. I'm actually a commuter student, so I can give that perspective too. Um, I'm like 20 minutes away from West Lib, so I don't have really that much of a commute. Um, I mean, it is, it would be nice to live on campus maybe your freshman year and get used to everything and get accustomed to like an actual college environment, but commuting is not bad whatsoever. We allow our freshmen to commute. Um, we have easy like parking spaces. Parking passes are automatically included in your tuition. Um, we have student parking in a lot of different places like right next to buildings in which you'll have your classes. So it's never really that difficult to find a parking space. Um, and I mean, I'm here with my parents, so it's kind of nice. I don't have to worry about dinners or meal plans or anything like that. So I've got kind of the easy life going on here, but it's, it's all up to you. As long as you get involved on campus, it's not gonna really take away from your college experience, but if you want a full college experience, then yeah, you can live on campus 100%, whichever is easier for you. So Lauren, you raised a good uh, topic that, that doesn't really get talked about a whole lot, but I also was an RA. So maybe you just touched on what are some of the benefits of being an RA? The major benefit for, I think almost everybody who's an RA is the free room and board. Um, so the whole $9,800 that we have a year, we don't have to pay any of it. And I think that's just fantastic. That's not the reason I became an RA. There's other reasons. Don't think that I'm just trying to like get a job or whatever. It's a nice thing, but, um, I mean, it provides great leadership opportunities for me. It got me out of my comfort zone a bit more. Um, I met people that I would have met otherwise, people in different majors, dental hygiene, USAI general biology, things like that, education. I would have never met those people because I stay in my major and I stay with my friends in that major. It was able to give me an opportunity to explore. Um, I've been able to help residents. I have a mostly freshman floor. So I am a big important step when they come, first come to college. I'm the first person that they see and I'm able to help them, give them advice. I'm kind of that like middleman between faculty and students. And so it, it's just a great benefit. It looks really good on a resume. Um, and again, free room and board is really nice. And then the great leadership opportunities too. Um, I've become a leader to our staff um, just with the amount of seniority that I have. I've been an RA for four semesters. So, I mean, it just, it's a great opportunity. And at West Liberty, you can apply to be an RA your first semester here. So like for, your, for the second semester. So you go through one full semester, excuse me, one full semester, and then you can become an RA for the next year. Super cool. All right. Um, so we got some questions that come in. I'm, I'm curious, what are some unique West Liberty experiences that uh, you all have had and, and enjoyed that you'd share to uh, maybe encourage or entice uh, a potential uh, student to uh, apply and, and attend West Liberty? Um, I know on my orientation day, I got to meet the sloth that used to be at West Lib, Sweet Pea, that was a part of our Zusai program, which was the coolest thing I have ever seen in my entire life. She was still a baby. Um, she was being held like a baby and she kind of like leaned back and was trying to climb on the wires that were in the classroom. Um, so that was amazing. So I love animals. Um, but Honestly, the coolest things that I've probably seen have been through the ZUSAI program and through like uh, microbiology classes and stuff because I'm a huge like science nerd. Um, so they're doing like conservation things. So they're like actually mating animals and trying to get like numbers back up in certain species that are endangered, which I think is an amazing program for the ZUSAI kids. And then um, in microbiology, which I took as a human biology major, like we were growing like bacteria and making them glow in like fluorescent lighting, which to me is amazing. I don't know if other people find that interesting, but I mean, I just like all the opportunities that are at West Lib. It's all really amazing. Yeah, seeing Sweet Pea is like the most great, it's the greatest thing ever. I mean, what other campus is a sloth? Like, I mean, you just can't top that. But um, one of my favorite things on campus um, is Winterfest. So Winterfest is like essentially Christmas Eve on the hilltop. Um, it's like the week before finals, we all like crowd into the student union 
and we make hot chocolate, we decorate cookies, and we decorate ornaments, and Santa comes, and we have some music perform performances from our music ed students who come in, they sing Christmas carols, we light a Christmas tree, and then you, you, know, you do that for a couple hours, you have a bunch of games, all the RAs dress up as elves, uh, yeah, don't even, I haven't dressed up yet, so, um, and then <laughs> at the end of the night, we all go into the college hall, which is like an auditorium, and we play Christmas bingo, and it's like the biggest bingo game you've ever seen. They give out prizes like Apple Watches, and AirPods, and Nintendo Switches, and Keurigs, and you know, we put all, you know, we get, we get the prizes. Um, it's very competitive. It used to just be back in the student union, but everybody kept coming. Commuters would come up and stay. That way they had to move it somewhere bigger. Um, I've never won anything, go figure. Um, but it's a fantastic time. I mean, everybody is so positive and who doesn't love Christmas? I mean, it's such a great time. And it's just like, it like kind of wraps up the whole semester and you know, you're stressed out about finals and this kind of, it like gives you a night away. And with like some of the, we have great campus activities. Like we, we literally just have a person with the title camp campus activities coordinator. Her literal job is to come up with campus activities. So she does a fantastic job. We just do regular bingo with regular prizes. Um, we do paint and sits, we do karaoke nights, open mic nights. Um, we did a succulent uh, potting thing, a succulent making thing. We've done build a topper. So we did build a bear, but topper the bear. So we make toppers. Um, yeah, we just like do trivia nights and all these other things. So like we have a lot of fun up here. If you ever talk to somebody from West Lib and they say it's not fun at all, it's because they didn't try and like look for the fun things. They're out there, they're right in front of you. You just gotta go out and you just gotta do them. Yeah. All right, so it sounds like I have to take a couple classes uh, this semester to show up for a winter fest and uh, maybe win a prize or two. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's great. Uh, it's great. <laughs> Uh, anything else you guys want to share? Any other topics that uh, maybe expand upon that, uh, or maybe thinking back to you know when you were uh, a high school junior or senior, what some of the things that you were thinking about or questions that you had that you wish you could have told uh, former you at that point in, in making that decision? Um, I know that I've changed my major uh, quite a bit. I stayed in like the biology field, but I was pre-vet starting out and then I was thinking about like going into dentistry school and then I was thinking about maybe PT school. So I just want to say like it's 100% okay if you don't know exactly what you want to do when you enter college, you can figure it out as you go along, um, especially in the science field. I recommend like shadowing, volunteering. A lot of like the places up here are more than willing to let you do that. I've worked with a lot of vet offices and a lot of physical therapists. So 100% just reach out to any local businesses and they'll be more than willing to help you out. Um, so don't freak out about not having everything figured out when you enter college. A lot of us still don't. Um, but I would just kind of probably give myself the advice to like learn how to study too in high school because college is a little bit of a different ball game when it comes to memorizing everything, but it's still a good time. You just have to have that, like that time management in so you can still have fun with your friends, but also make sure you don't slack on your schoolwork, but just get involved in as much as you can and you'll feel like home basically anywhere you go. My advice would be to definitely go on those in-person college tours um, I wouldn't have chosen West Liberty if I didn't go on a tour um, because it was four hours away. It seemed too far. It seemed really small, but I got, I stepped on campus and I, I promise you, like, it was like one of the, I just felt this like thing come over me. of just like, I need to be there. Like the people were fantastic. Some of the people that I've met here are just like people that I'm going to keep in my life forever. Um, I mean, and it's that atmosphere everywhere. Like I'll see Rhonda just randomly in the union she'll wave i mean like i mean how many people do you get to see that does that like i saw <laughs> president griner today in the union he was on our he was on what's up west lib today so i mean it's just the atmosphere it's a friendly environment everybody is so nice i've met so many great people through all of this my boss right now as my housing boss actually gave me a presentation at my open house 
and that we just like never made that connection until this year. So, I mean, it's a small, it's a small little area, but it's, it's fantastic. And definitely go on those tours because I actually canceled all of my, the rest of my college tours just to come to Westlip because like, I mean, why, why I go on more when like, you already know, you know? So like, it was fantastic. So I highly recommend going on those college. Good point. To build off of what Lauren said too, like everybody is so nice. And that includes professors, like 100%. Like I used to be like scared that I would annoy professors or like maybe they didn't want to talk to me or something. I don't know why, but like the professors here are literally willing to work with you with whatever. Like I started doing research with Dr. Horzempa this semester and he knew that I was kind of interested in forensic biology. So he created like my entire research project based on what I wanted to go into. So it's like they're accommodating. They answer emails within a day, typically, especially if it's throughout the week. Um, they will answer basically any questions you have under non-COVID conditions. If their doors open, typically you could just stop in and talk to them. I've used some of them like my guidance counselors. So I mean, like literally, you can talk to any of your professors. They'll all know you by name and they're more than willing to help you out. Yeah, I can agree with that. Um, in broadcasting, our major is so small that um, we're pretty much on a first name basis with our professor. He's not Professor Lee, he's Chris. And um, I mean, he doesn't like it when you call him Professor Lee at all. So um, it's a great atmosphere. Um, even if you're in a larger major, it you, you know, you still get that one-on-one -on -one experience and it's, it's amazing. I highly recommend it. All right, well, Rhonda, are there any uh, final words uh, from, from you? We've had some great uh, insight from your, your wonderful students, but I wanna give you an opportunity if there's any um, final comments or, or things that you wanna share for, for the listeners. Sure. Thank you, Taylor. And I, I want to thank you, Taylor, for being our facilitator. You know, you've been wonderful. And I, I can't thank Lauren and Bree enough because seeing, hearing their insight as current students is amazing. And they do such a good job uh, for us as ambassadors and uh, for the university. And I just want to thank you for, for being here this evening and being a part of this. Um, I just want to say encourage students to apply and um, just know that we are here for you. You can reach out at any time by phone, by email, uh, by whatever means. Um, and we have a, a chat feature as well that you could do, do that to communicate, but we are here to help you through the process. I know it could be overwhelming and I know things are very, very different right now because of COVID. Um, so, I, and I know we're all just doing the best we can to, to get through this together, but please reach out if you have any questions or if there's anything at all that we can help you with. All right. Well, again, thank you guys for your presentation. Thank you for um, all the information that you have provided to uh, those that are, are watching. And again, uh, thank you for those who are, are watching along and uh, have been with us. Um, I just have a, a quick final slide uh, to share with everybody um, as we say goodbye um, and, and thank again to our panelists and our presenters. Um, we're getting ready to end the presentation now. When I do that, what will happen is you'll be asked to do a quick four question survey. This just helps us to improve uh, our presentations and, and sessions moving forward. Uh, so please take a time to do that. Again, please feel free to visit our website, westvirginiaacro.org. That's W-V-A-C-R-A-O.org. Uh, after this, see what sessions are left. See what sessions we've already posted videos for and keep coming back as more uh, recordings are posted to that. So again, thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching. And we'll hope to see you in a session very soon. Have a great night. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs>